Dr. Nadia Padaguana and Dr. Jason Fung discuss PCOS and insulin resistance and how to increase insulin sensitivity. In their book, The PCOS Plan, Prevent and Reverse Polycystic Ovary Syndrome Through Diet and Fasting. If you're not sure whether this book's worth your time, I'm here to help. I'm Steve Goldring from simplehormones.com. I help healthcare providers and patients with easy to understand patient education resources. If you know of a patient education resource or a book that you'd like me to review, drop a comment in the space below and I'll try to get to it as soon as I can. Polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS affects about 10% of women between 15 and 45. Dr. Pataguana is a naturopathic physician from Mozambique educated in Canada. She shares her personal PCOS story as well as her passion for helping women with PCOS infertility issues, as well as insulin resistance in females. Canadian nephrologist Dr. Jason Fung offers his experience with diabetics. His practice deals with patients who have undergone decades of high blood glucose levels and, of course, lots of insulin resistance. Well, some women with PCOS are obese or overweight. Some, like Dr. Pataguana, have visceral fat, but they don't necessarily look overweight. Some have masculinization symptoms like unwanted hair growth, male pattern baldness, acne. Some women with PCOS don't have any outward signs or symptoms that they, that they have the disease, but they suffer from missed periods and other unseen symptoms. If PCOS were just about uh, male pattern baldness and hirsutism, it probably wouldn't be that big of a deal. Unfortunately, a long list of serious health risks make PCOS something to be really deeply concerned about. A loss of ovulation leads to infertility, problems in pregnancy like gestational diabetes, and problems with the fetus, cardiovascular disease, anxiety, depression, type 2 diabetes, cancer, especially breast cancer, metabolic syndrome, which would include uh, obesity, high blood pressure, high triglycerides. Pataguana and Fung describe the onset of the diabesity epidemic around the world. They point a finger directly at US dietary guidelines that led us all to decrease our dietary fat and increase our dietary carbohydrates. They make a pretty convincing argument that PCOS and weight gain are a direct result of all the sugar and carbohydrates we've been devouring over the past 40 years. Government guidelines encourage high carbohydrates and snacking multiple times per day. There's really no science behind these guidelines. It's really just opinion. But they've been incredibly effective. Because we've been eating high amounts of carbs all day long, every day for the past 40 years, it's produced an epidemic of insulin resistance. The insulin resistance epidemic has produced a giant spike in type 2 diabetes, especially in people over 40 or 50. By just about every measure, diabetes is completely out of control, and it's going to continue to get worse if we don't change our approach to it. Insulin resistance in females is the same underlying cause as the diabetes epidemic. The underlying problem in PCOS isn't the inability to lose weight, the masculinization symptoms, or even the high testosterone level. While those are all important, those are just the symptoms of insulin resistance. PCOS and insulin resistance just really can't be separated. The authors cite a paper from 1976 where a 13-year-old girl experienced extreme insulin resistance. She needed 48,000 units of insulin every day in order to stay alive. Even people with severe type 2 diabetes might not take more than 100 units of insulin per day. In this 13-year-old girl, high doses of insulin caused hirsutism or hair growth. It caused acanthosis nigricans or velvety uh, dark patches of skin. It caused enlarged ovaries. Those are all typical symptoms of PCOS. The main problem in insulin resistance in PCOS is that insulin normally moves glucose from outside the cell to the inside of the cell. And for some reason, insulin resistance means that the glucose doesn't move to the inside of the cell very well. That lack of insulin response causes blood glucose to build up outside the cell. And higher blood glucose encourages larger and larger amounts of insulin to be secreted by the pancreas. The end result of insulin resistance is hyperinsulinemia. Hyperinsulinemia causes the ovaries to produce excess testosterone. If ovaries are bathed in testosterone, nothing really happens. But if ovary cells are bathed in insulin, 
they overproduce testosterone. And that's what leads to all the masculinization symptoms of PCOS. Excess testosterone causes the arrest of follicular development. The follicles never mature into mature eggs that can be ovulated. And so that prevents ovulation from happening. In addition, the excess insulin levels mess with the FSH and LH ratios from the pituitary gland. Those two sex hormones that are involved in reproduction are not in their normal balance. And that also disrupts the development of follicles and the ovulation system. But why is insulin resistance there in the first place? Well, Dr. Jason Fung has an explanation that's a little bit outside the accepted model. The accepted paradigm is a broken key phenomenon. The idea is that insulin is a key that unlocks a door on the cell to allow glucose in. And for some reason, that key is broken in insulin resistance and doesn't allow glucose to get into the cell. Well, Dr. Fung's paradigm is a little simpler than that. He says that the insulin key works just fine. The problem is that the cell is already packed full with glucose and the glucose inside the cell just can't accept another molecule. And the reason the cell can't get any more glucose inside is because there's already too much. Dietary guidelines have encouraged all of us to eat tons of sugar and carbohydrates for the past 40 years. We've also been encouraged to snack all day long rather than allow our blood glucose and our insulin to drop back to baseline levels in between meals. So those two factors have led all of us, including young women, to a place where we have chronically elevated blood glucose levels, chronic insulin resistance, and chronic hyperinsulinemia, too much insulin in our bloodstream. The PCOS plan goes over several treatments that don't really solve the root issue in PCOS. Birth control pills help to regulate women's cycles, but they don't do anything for the underlying problem. Spironolactone and finasteride both help with masculinization symptoms, but they don't help the root issue. Clomiphene, letrozole, gonadotropins, those all may help encourage ovulation and might even help a woman get pregnant and come to term with their baby, but they still don't solve the real problem in PCOS. Surgical resection of the ovary can temporarily reduce testosterone levels. Low calorie diets, low fat diets, and exercise have all been proven pretty much ineffective for PCOS and weight gain. The only real solution to PCOS is addressing the insulin resistance by increasing insulin sensitivity. For anybody familiar with Dr. Jason Fung's work, The Obesity Code and The Diabetes Code, it's not gonna come as a surprise that the authors recommend, number one, a low carbohydrate diet, and number two, intermittent fasting to help increase insulin sensitivity and reverse insulin resistance of PCOS. They recommend that you eliminate all sugar as well as all sweeteners that contain fructose or any other ingredients that could elevate your blood glucose levels or cause increased insulin resistance. They talk about reducing carbohydrates, reducing refined grains like rice and corn and potatoes and wheat and rye and barley. The authors recommend eating moderate amounts of protein and they emphasize healthy fats like uh, salmon and olive oil and avocado. The two types of fasting that they'd recommend are 16-8, which is where you have a 16 hour window of fasting and an eight hour window of eating. And then they also talk about extended fasting going up to 24, even 42 hours, maybe a couple of times a week kind of alternate day fasting. I found this book really easy to read. It's full of Dr. Padaguana's personal stories. That's not a bad thing in my opinion. I'd really strongly recommend this book for patients, especially patients who don't quite get it, that PCOS is all about insulin resistance and maybe, maybe they have a resistance to the idea of PCOS and insulin resistance. It's a clear and simple resource that does a great job of explaining the problem as well as the best solutions that really get down to the root. If you appreciated this video review, click the like and subscribe buttons and get notified anytime I post a new review video. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Check out some other videos on YouTube from Dr. Nadia Padaguana and Dr. Jason Fung about PCOS and insulin resistance.